console has five different types of channel, all of which are color-coded according to their type. We'll look first at the light blue colored input channels. Touching any of these will assign the console's controls to that channel and the strip will be displayed with a gold colored background. The first controls at the top of the channel strip are the gain, trim and phase polarity controls. The controls that you see depend on the type of input that is routed into that channel. If there is no input or a digital input such as AES routed, you will only see a blue trim control. This is the digital trim that is applied in the console audio engine. If an analog input is routed, you will also see a red analog gain control. This is actually just a remote control for the analog mic pre in the rack or on the console local I.O. The polarity button inverts the polarity of the incoming signal. On a stereo channel, it has four states that allow either or both sides of the stereo signal to be reversed. When there are both analog gain and digital trim controls in a channel, you should use the quick select gain button and the screen scroll to get access to the trim. When an analog signal is selected, there is also a track button next to the trim which switches on what we call gain tracking. You might use gain tracking if you are sharing a rack with another console and they have control of the analog gain. This would normally mean that the levels of your inputs are potentially being changed by someone else. To avoid this problem, once a good analog gain level has been set, you could switch on gain tracking for the shared inputs and then any gain change made by the other console will be automatically compensated by the digital trim on yours. With track switched on, you can actually see the trim control moving in the opposite direction to the analog gain whenever it is changed. Touching the top of the channel will then open the setup panel. At the top of the input channel setup panel, the first thing you will see is the mono and stereo selection buttons. All of the console's inputs are what we call flexi channels. This means that they can all be either mono or stereo in any combination. Just press the relevant button to select the type you require. If you have selected a mono channel, you can then use the channel's second input as an alt input. This allows you to have a spare mic patched into the same channel and switch to it with the press of a single button if there is ever a problem with the main mic. The spare mic signal will just pass down the same channel with the same processing as the main mic. Switching between the main and alt can be done with the two buttons just beneath the mono and stereo buttons or with a macro but you cannot switch to the ALT input unless you have already routed a signal to it. To route a signal into a channel, just press one of the buttons labelled MAIN INPUT or ALT INPUT to open the input routing panel and then select one of your racks in the left-hand column. Then select an input card for the middle column and finally select a socket from that card in the right-hand column. As well as rack ports, there is a button marked INTERNAL which contains all of the console's own input sources such as the oscillator, effects and other channels, groups and auxes. You might want to route several consecutive inputs at the same time to give you a one-to-one -one patch for the whole rack. This is done with Ripple Route. Touch one of the predefined Ripple channel buttons to select a number or touch the number itself to type it in. Now, just select the first input socket you require and the next sockets will be routed into as many channels as you have chosen. According to the type of input that you have chosen, 
extra buttons such as phantom power or AES source on and off will appear in the setup panel. If you have chosen a stereo channel, a number of other extra controls will also appear. These consist of balance and width controls for the stereo signal, automatic middle and side decoding, and switches to reverse the stereo image and send either side of the stereo signal to both left and right. Below these buttons, you can see the input channel's delay controls. They allow coarse or fine adjustment of the delay or the option to type in a delay time. The next thing in the setup panel is the channel name, which can be entered by touching and typing into the white box or selected from a list of predefined custom names by pressing the down arrow next to the label. Under the channel label are the safe switches for that channel. If you are using snapshots, you can select parts of the channel that will not be affected by any snapshot recall. Then, we have the copy from and copy to functions. If you press the copy from button, you can then select the amount and the parts of the channel that you want to copy. With copy from, you then select the first channel to copy from by pressing its work surface channel select button. This will take the settings from that channel and copy them to the channel that you are in. This function is normally used to copy the settings from one group of channels to another group of channels. The copy to function works in a similar way, but this takes the settings from the single channel that you are in and copies them to one or several others. Use this if you want to have the same settings as a starting point in a number of different channels. The next thing in the setup panel is the presets button. Pressing this opens a panel where you can save and recall single or multi-channel presets. With the settings that you want to save in this channel, just press the new button and type a name when prompted. Before continuing, touch the channels column next to the name and type a number of channels to save in this preset. If you don't enter a new number here, the preset will automatically contain a single channel settings. You don't have to worry about which settings have been saved at this point, because in channel presets, all settings are saved automatically. All the presets that you create can be recalled into any other input channel by opening the presets panel and selecting the preset that you want from the list. If you don't want all the settings to be recalled, just adjust the recall scope at the bottom of the presets panel to include on the parts that you require. For example, you could just recall EQ and Dynamics and ignore the stored settings for inputs, aux sends and group routing. If you store or recall a multi-channel preset, you need to remember that the channels are considered in numerical order. Therefore, if you store a multi-channel preset in channel 1 and specify 12 channels, you will get the channels 1 to 12 in your preset and not necessarily the channels that were physically next to channel 1 on the console at that time. Presets can also be organized into user-defined groups, updated and deleted in this panel. Another useful feature here is the default button that can be used to reset all or part of the channel to its original flat settings according to the recall scope you select. The final thing in the setup panel are the solo settings. 
Using these buttons, the channel can be set to output to Solo 1, Solo 2, or both. The Auto Solo buttons allow you to ensure that the channel will always be soloed whenever any other console channel solo is switched on. To close the Input Setup panel, touch the Close button in the top right of the panel. Moving down the input channel strip, the next controls are the high and low pass filters. When the channel is assigned, these can be controlled with the rotary encoders on the right of the screen. Once the EQ has been switched on, the remaining four bands of parametric EQ can also be adjusted here and by default, an expanded view of the EQ settings will pop up when you make an adjustment and close shortly afterwards. If you want to keep the EQ panel open for longer, just touch the EQ graph and it will stay open until you press the close button. All the parametric EQ bands can be switched into dynamic EQ mode by touching the delta symbol on the left of each band. This will pop up an extra panel. The console allows up to eight channels of dynamic EQ. So what is Dynamic EQ and why would you want to use it? In simple terms, it allows you to control the amount of EQ that you apply according to the level of the signal in the channel. So a low level signal might not be EQ'd where a high level signal was. You could even reverse that situation and have a low level signal being EQ'd where a high level one wasn't. If you think about what happens when a vocalist brings a microphone very close to their mouth, the signal gets louder, but there is also a bass boost in the signal. In that situation, you might want to put a low-end cut on the EQ. But if they move the mic away again, you won't want that cut anymore. A dynamic EQ will allow you to set a threshold level where the bass cut will start being applied, and then the more that the signal goes over that threshold, the more bass cut there will be. Obviously, there is a maximum limit to that cut, and this is represented by the setting that you have put on that band of EQ. When the signal comes back below the threshold, the bass cut is no longer applied. All of this is done in dynamic EQ over mode, which you will see indicated in the panel. The reverse of the situation that we described before would happen in under mode. To switch the dynamic EQ on, you use the dynamic on button and the EQ band can be temporarily bypassed for AB comparisons with the band on off button. Remember to switch the band back on when you have used this function as that EQ band will have no effect at all unless it is active. You can also control the attack, release and ratio settings for the dynamic EQ in the same way as you would with a compressor. All of this can be done by touching the on-screen controls and using the rotary encoders and switches below the screen. Going back to the standard EQ panel, you will also see a button to set the EQ gain controls flat, an EQ safe button to prevent the EQ being affected by snapshot recall, and another way to access the presets panel to store your favorite EQs. The order of the EQ and dynamic sections in the input channel can also be changed here using the EQ DYN button.